So a few weeks ago I went to the Casa Arts store in Glasgow, which is a thing of beauty uh, and very dangerous uh, shop to visit. And uh, while I was there they had a sale on and I picked up this set of Winsor & Newton designers gouache. And I've never used gouache before so I thought it would be a good job to give it a go. I've been seeing lots of things that I really like um, and going, ooh, what's that? And realising it's, it's, it's gouache. Um, so I've been collecting a little Pinterest board of inspiration and uh, working out what I want to do with it. So today I'm going to try two different things. I'm going to um, I'm going to swatch some colours and just see what I've got here and then I'm going to try my first ever gouache painting. So I've got a few things. I've got some uh, jars of water and some paper towel for cleaning my brushes. Now I've got lots of paint brushes. Um, the ones I'm going to start with today are these, um, which are they're designed for acrylics. I was going to use my watercolor brushes. I've got some sable watercolor brushes here, but one of the tutorials I watched said that they carry too much water and you can end up diluting your paint too much. So I'm going to start uh, with these and see how I get on. And I've got a variety of different sizes. These came from a set that are all these like is it a filbert, like a flat round brush. It's, a, it's a, a shape of brush I really like using for acrylic painting because you can get really sharp lines but you can also get the soft um, softness of the round tip as well and you can get fine lines by turning them on the side and you can get broad strokes by using them flat. So I find them really versatile and I've got a few different sizes here. I've also got a cheap plastic palette and I've got some cold pressed watercolour paper. Um, you can paint gouache on lots of different surfaces um, so I'm going to give this a go and see what it looks like. I'm going to just try putting out a little bit of each one. So this is primary yellow and this is permanent yellow deep. I'm really hoping that having bought a set I will get um, cool and warm shades of every colour. Spectrum red and then we've got primary red. Primary blue, ultramarine. There's permanent green middle. We've got yellow ochre ivory black and then zinc white. I'd normally go for titanium white but we'll see what zinc white looks like. When I say normally I mean in acrylics. I've not used the gouache before. What I've found out so far in my research about gouache is not to use it straight out of the tube but to mix it with a little bit of water first. So I start by making swatches of different colours. Um, I try and swatch every colour that I've got. Um, so the colours on the left are not quite straight out of the tube but just with a little bit of water applied. And then I start adding more and more water and uh, washing that colour out as I go towards the right of the page. I want to kind of see how, um, how fluid and how uh, kind of watercolour like I can get it. One of, the, uh, one of the things about uh, gouache painting is that you can use it um, thickly and opaquely in a way that's kind of similar to you'd use acrylics, but you can also use a lot of water with the paint and use them like watercolours. So you've got a, kind of a, a bit of both worlds, um, which is one of the reasons I wanted to try it out. I'm really glad to see that these have got some really good vibrant pigments in them, um, really good vibrant colours. Um, I'm really excited to use these. So this is the sketch for my uh, February print that I'm going to make and I thought this would be a good test of the uh, gouache so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trace this onto some watercolour paper and then try and create a nice like illustrative style painting of this and see how it goes. So I'm going to start with some tracing paper and use a little bit of tape to keep it in place. And then I'm going to trace around it. So now I've got my 
uh, watercolour paper here and I'm just going to transfer this image and then I have some carbon paper I'll just put that underneath and trace through again So now I've got my image transferred onto my paper and I start mixing up a colour for the background. So I'm using that primary blue and a little bit of black to make it nice and dark and I, I keep adding more black in to make it darker. Uh, one thing I'm not sure about at this point is how much paint to mix up. So I've done what I think uh, might be good but I've really got no idea at this stage. So I start painting around my drawing and what I'm trying to do is uh, is to draw up to my pencil lines uh, but not go over them because I, I do want to kind of still see where they are so that I can do the next bit. Um, but I want the background to kind of look seamless so I kind of want to paint just up to and over the uh, the pencil lines or where I'm going to paint the 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 flowers and leaves and things and the the big F. Um, I realised I hadn't mixed up enough paint uh, and so I mixed another batch and um, I think I got the colour match fairly well. I think the first lot of paint that I mixed up wasn't really opaque enough so it, it looks a bit patchy in places. And then I start on the F and I've mixed up some of that primary blue with a little bit of yellow and uh, a little bit of some of the white in it and this time I mixed up um, a, a good deal more although it still wasn't enough to do the F um, and I had to um, had to mix some and colour match and that was a bit tricky because um, because it dries slightly different colour to when it's wet so you've got to just kind of try and remember what amounts you put in and uh, yeah, and then you can't tell whether you've got a really good colour match until both colours are dry. Um, but I think I did okay. And I start going around carefully trying to fill in the, uh, the big S and trying to go over the, uh, uh, the lines um, so I don't leave any white gaps on the page. I'm having a little bit of problem now um, getting the coverage right because I want my paint to be fairly opaque and thick but on this paper it's leaving um, like textured uh, details where I don't want them. So I'm going to have to go over every area several times with, uh, with the paint and that isn't ideal. Now I've mixed up a pale blue with some of that blue and the white and I added a little bit of the primary red into it to make it a little bit warmer and I start painting my flowers. Now these have all got either five or six petals. Um, I had a look at some photos of forget-me-nots beforehand and uh, most of them have five petals and then you get the odd one with six. Um, and what I found at this point was that I hadn't put the background cover colour far enough into the flowers so I had some white gaps which I'm going to have to go in and fix later. And then I mixed up a dark green um, to start doing the ferns and uh, yeah it was it was very very similar to the in tone to the blue so it was quite difficult to see where I was painting. Now I always plan to go over this and do some details in a slightly lighter green so um, so at this point I'm hoping that's going to fix it. Um, but uh, at the minute they look very dark and they're just kind of blending into the background. I make the ferns by doing one long stem and then starting at the very end of it and just putting little blobs on the end and then working from one side and the other and adding a little uh, branch that um, has a blob on the left and a blob on the right and a blob on the left and a blob on the right and then just making those uh, uh, little spurs longer 
as you go down the, the leaf. As I'm painting the ferns, I want them to look like they're kind of wrapped around this letter, so I'll paint some bits underneath and then other bits on the top, and it just makes it look like they're kind of they've grown up around this letter. At this point I've still got all these little bits of white on the page and so I mix up some more of my background colour and I try and go over any areas that I think are particularly patchy and, uh, and I go over a lot of those areas that I've left in white uh, because I don't want any of the white background showing there. Now this, um, this takes away some of the definition of the, the flowers that I've been uh, very carefully painting so I'm gonna have to go over them again in the pale blue and uh, and just neaten them up a little bit so I feel like because of my inexperience with this medium I ended up um, kind of having to paint areas two or three times that um, probably didn't really need it um, but I just kept trying to fix the things that had gone wrong and at this point it's all looking quite flat and dull and I'm wondering even whether I should just give up and start again. But I decide to, no, it, I'm just going to keep going with it and uh, yeah, so I go over the flowers that I've uh, I've kind of messed up a little bit, just try and make the petals look a bit rounder and happier again. And then I mix up a slightly paler green uh, to add some highlights onto the ferns, just to give them a little bit more definition and make it look like they are kind of in the light so I paint it on like the light is coming from the left hand side of the painting and as they start to come together I'm starting to think actually this maybe doesn't look too bad so I'm look quite looking forward to putting some more detail onto the flowers as well and uh, and yeah just making them look a little bit more like forget-me-nots and a little bit less like blue blobs so I start putting centres in uh, with a little white dot and at this point I'm just marking where the centre of each flower is. Then I mix up a slightly darker version of that uh, kind of cornflower blue that I've got for making these forget-me-nots and I decide to outline the flowers just to give them a little bit more definition uh, so each petal kind of stands on its own, makes them stand out against each other a little bit more where they're, where they're overlapping. So if you look at forget-me-nots, you see they've got like a little star shape at the centre. And so I very, very carefully with my smallest brush paint some little points onto the star to make that dot look like a star. And then with a very bright yellow, I go in and just add a little dot to the center of each flower. At this point, I think I'm finished, and then I realize, oh no, I'm not actually. I was going to put in little stems and leaves for the forget-me-nots. So I mix up like a sagey green color um, that's got a little bit more gray into it than the, uh, the, the color I used for the ferns, and start painting some little leaves and stems. So this is the completed painting and on the whole I'm quite pleased with it. I think that there are definitely things I can improve. Um, I still feel like the background's quite patchy and I probably didn't, um, I probably could have done a better job of that. And I think the, the difference between the tones uh, could have been greater and things like the ferns don't stand out terribly well. But uh, but on the whole, I'm, I'm quite pleased with it, and enough to keep wanting to experiment. And I've got some further ideas I want to play with. I want to do more with kind of light washes of colour and try experimenting with that. And I also want to do some more on hot press paper because I found that the paint kind of, it didn't cover the cold press paper nice and smoothly because it's got more of a grain to it. Um, so I think the 
hot press paper might work better for that. So I'm going to try that next time. So if you'd like to see videos of that then do comment and uh, let me know. I make new creative videos every week. Uh, if you like to see more of them then please do subscribe and if you like this video hit the like button and I shall see you again next week. Bye!